Low Targar friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and it's time for another Orc Mode workout and today was Dynamic Effort Squat and Deadlift Day. Now, hopefully this will be up today. A uh, little bit of news, people may have noticed a lack of videos coming up today. I was just starting yesterday to upload my next four days worth of videos because I like to do four or five days worth at a time. I had already made everything public that I uploaded and my modem crashed. My modem died completely. Um, took me multiple phone calls to get a tech, and a tech is coming out late this morning. Hopefully by lunchtime, have it scheduled. Replace my modem, get me up and running. So hopefully uh, this video is up this afternoon, but there's no morning videos. And I'll get some stuff in, into the mix uh, later today and through the weekend. But I'm going to be a little backed up as far as uploads go. Because I a lot of times I do that, I wait. I wait and then that happens. But a quick reminder, uh, for those of you who enjoy these videos, please click like down below. Help me keep the likes higher than the dislikes. We don't always do that. And let's talk a little bit about Dynamic Effort Day. So today was second week of the wave. We're obviously using the safety bar. And you know, we get a lot of people who are they're trying to tell me, oh, if you use this bar or that, it won't hurt your neck. Guys, even the squats hurt my neck. All right? Notice that there's no real pulling forward. And I think it's because of the way these bars sit on the traps. It's a downward pull on the traps, a downward pull on my neck. It gives me headaches, gives me neck pain if I'm not careful. And it's because I have probably a weak neck to some extent. So that's why I'm doing the neck training for the back of my neck. Um, just to help with that. And it does help. It helps tremendously. So people need to realize that. I've even had people saying, hey, you know, if you just put a thick pad on that bar, that pad is like five inches in diameter. That pad is massive. It it's already has pads. It still doesn't, doesn't help. Still doesn't help. So I continue to do them though because I know I need to do these, right? We need the extra T spine. So for a long time, all my volume box squatting is going to be with this. It's going to include the speed work. So today was 10 doubles on this and 10 doubles on the speed pulls. For those curious, and I'll put it below, these are at 55% max plus 25% band tension, right? And people need to understand when we say band tension 25%, we don't mean bar weight. We mean 25% of your one rep max. So if your max is 500 pounds, you put 125 pounds of band tension on there. Right? Hopefully that's clear. So, again, compensatory acceleration. We explode as hard as we can. Um, and notice I'm getting better and better at doing my, my box squats closer to west side style some people commented on that and they'll comment that this squad or that doesn't look like it. what's going on and they're looking at old footage that i've worked back in all right keep in mind guys a lot of the stuff that you see is old some of the footage that you see come up is is new videos is two month old footage unless there's a date on it right if i have a date on it that means it's a workout vlog that means it's current there's stuff that you're seeing coming up this week that could have been filmed in January or December. It's stock footage I use in the backgrounds. And keep in mind, right now I have 90 informative videos sitting on my computer that haven't been uploaded. I have 90. It takes a little while to get those in the rotation. That's just how many videos I do. I crank videos out. Sometimes I crank out five videos first thing in the morning. Like there's been times where in the first two hours I'm awake. And typing back and forth with clients and other stuff. I'll make five videos. I'm talking before 7 a.m. And then get up and then go train. It's how my day goes. So there's tons of them. And it's a lot of old footage in there. So if you want to see current stuff. You have to go current. Right? Like you can't even assess. Oh man, you look like you've gained or lost fat this week. Or whatever people will say that. You know, looking at those. And it's like, well, how would you know if you're not looking at today's vlog. With a date on it. Right? So, that aside, um, scale is slowly going down still, losing weight while gaining strength. But today was tough. Like, the speed squat and deadlift day is really my hardest day. Like, this is the most challenging day in my training. And I mean, to give you an idea, look how much I sweat as I'm doing these. I'm in full air-conditioned building with fans on. A lot of times I have a fan blowing on me. I'm not wearing anything, so it's not like I have clothing to blame. The reason I don't wear stuff, it's hot where I live in Houston, and I sweat easily anyways. I'm a very warm nature person. Like, so definitely breaking a sweat with all this. It's just tough. And then we did the speed sumo pulls. 
And these are always tough on my hands. Like I noticed when I went to do rows today, I couldn't do as many sets of rows as I wanted. My hands were just hurting and I'm just like, I'm going to stop at three sets. But that's the beauty of it. You know, with a lot of supplemental lifts, three sets of challenging work is enough work to grow off of. You know, particularly when we've done so much speed work volume. And I get clients who ask that too. Like, why do you have me do less volume on speed days than max days? And it's like, it should be obvious. Max days are easier, right? Ramping to a one rep max versus doing 10 speed benches, and particularly a max deadlift or a max squat versus 10 speed squats and 10 speed pulls. We're in completely different ballparks of volume. We don't do as much supplemental work on those days. It's not necessary. We've already done a ton of volume. Done a ton of volume. But, and a lot of guys will notice in here too, I alternate hands now. Every other speed pull, I alternate hands. Why? Because um, I'm not worried about tearing a bicep. So I don't care about the, the weaker side that I've previously injured many years ago. I'm not worried about it. So, I'm just trying to keep the hypertrophy balance, right? We switch back and forth. That way, we don't develop any further muscle imbalances from the mixed grip. And I'll always pull with my stronger side. Which is funny that, funny enough, though, I had someone ask in the comments, a regular person, like, why well, haven't your triceps grown with all the tricep work you've done? But, you know, I get your biceps because of the injury and stuff. Like, well, they have grown. They have grown. I can tell the difference. And you guys have to remember this fisheye lens is not a good proportion. And people notice that a lot when I break out the HD camcorder and I do the actual instructional videos. They're like, why do you look so much bigger? I'm like, because I don't have a fisheye lens distorting me. The fisheye lens is the only way I can keep the camera in the same room and get my entire body in it. Right? If I use a normal HD camcorder, you're only going to see half of me, even zoomed all the way out. But I can take it into the other room all the way by behind the hyper, reverse hyper, and film it all the way to the platform. But I have to have the camera something like 12 feet away to do that. There, I don't have that type of space in this room. So I have to use the fisheye lens on the GoPro. And it's going to make me look different. But the other thing is that I always have to remind you guys, even if I had 18 inch arms, they wouldn't look big on me. Now, I happen to actually do know what my arms measure because someone recently wanted to measure them in person who said they look bigger. So I do know what my arms are, but I'm not going to bother to say what it is online because I don't feel like proving it. So there's no need to throw a number out. But you have to remember, proportions are proportions. I'm probably bigger overall than people realize. Keeping in mind, I am 227 pounds right now. A lot of guys who you guys think are big weigh 170. And four people say, well, it's all fat. You've seen DEXA scans. You guys know that my lean body mass is heavier than their body weights. Right? So, perspective. I'm 227 with long arms. If I had 18-inch arms, they wouldn't look big on me. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, nothing I can do about that. So let's get back over to the training. Get back over to the training. Sumo pulls. Uh, again, these were hard on my hands and upper back today. I felt them. I got a really good training response from these today, but I felt the grip get worked a lot. Felt the grip really get worked. And so much so that... Uh, my upper back got worked so hard today between the safety bar and that. I said, let's, let's cut the good mornings for today. We're pushing them really hard at least once a week. All right, we're pushing them really hard. Like, I do want to make sure my hamstrings get plenty of work. I don't want this stuff to become too upper body dominant. I know I need the upper back. I need to make sure my lower body is getting maximum development. So I'm like, let me throw in some sets of these glued ham raises. All right, I haven't done any in a week or two. Let me knock out at least three really good sets on this hard setting. And I threw at least one of these in where you see me more or less climbing on there. You see how little space I have. I can't even put my leg in between the thing. It doesn't really fit. Uh, so I have it in really, really far. Because I'm trying to maximize tension. So my knee is actually up on above the base of the pad. So that little base, that plate at the bottom of the pad, my knee is well above that. Even when I'm up top and my knee's at the lowest position. So... Again, we're making these difficult. We want them to be difficult. And eventually, I'll get to where I can do these with bands and stuff again, or plates. Uh, but right now, at my current body weight and this hard position, they're pretty tough as they are. I'll need to get stronger at them. 
but I don't have a lot of room for these in my training. It's just, it's really difficult right now for me to focus on the reverse hyper as hard as I am, because for me, it is really such a pivotal exercise and still do all my good mornings. It's just so hard to work these in. And it is an issue of recovery. It's the problem is that when I do all three in the same workout, my hamstrings cramp so bad that I can't even sit down to record a video later because I have to sit down at my desk to do these voiceovers. And if I sit here and bend my leg, my hamstrings cramp so bad that I want to scream and then I can't stand up. I have to find a way to get them straight. That's just not possible for me to do all three in one session, not to any difficult degree. There are limits. There's limits. And, you know, today, though, I was able to do them. And this is going to be maximum hamstring development today. I mean, today is as much hamstring as we can tolerate. Right? We have the, the box squats where I'm sitting all the way back for speed boxes. We have the speed sumo pulls. Hamstrings get hit pretty hard. In fact, my upper back got worked pretty hard there. And we're going to do the reverse hypers later. Well, that three sets of... of glued ham raises was was very substantial i've got a very very good effect from that in my hamstrings and i still feel them and we did rows but my grip my hands were just so throbbing today my hands hurt and i really felt my lats i think between the speed pulls and having done you know the five sets to failure yesterday on inverted rows these were tough today but i needed to do some three sets of ten plenty of training volume so I did my three sets of 10. Problem is that my hands were hurting. And the axle bar is tough. Um, 190 pounds is what I'm working with on these. And doing them with the axle bar, it, it's tough on the grip. Three sets of 10. And especially after doing speed pulls, hands were just hurting. And I'm like, you know, I, I can only really handle three sets. And I knew that when I did the first set. I'm like, I'm going to go ahead and get three. And then I'm like, I'll just throw in a set of hammer curls to failure. Because I did a lot of bicep work yesterday, too. But I do want to make sure that we get a little more today because it is a rowing day. So, you know, we did plenty of bicep work between the five sets of inverted rows to failure than all those heavier hammer curls. But I'm like, well, let me make sure I just finish them off. And I want to make sure I get strong in those hammer, hammer position. Because it's going to carry over a lot to all my rowing. And I need the extra bicep for bottom of my bench. And with a, when I'm doing wider grip bench, bicep is important. Right? Look at some of the research on it. The wider the grip goes on your bench, the more the bicep is activated. Okay? It tells us that it's an important stabilizer muscle. Not so much on the closer grip, but as we go wider it is. So we do, we do need to train them. It's something I've been trying to make clear to people as much as we might joke and say, oh, it's a stupid, useless bodybuilder muscle. It doesn't have any value. And you know it will affect your bench. It will. You can't be in denial of that. Not saying it's going to make a massive difference, but it matters. And there you guys can get a better look at how I look. We can observe when I'm doing the curls without the belt. You guys can see me, how the fat loss will be going from here. And of course, I've got the loose skin. I've had people come in and even ask recently again, why is this guy got so much loose skin? It's like, I guess they don't follow the story. I lost 100 pounds of body fat. I lost 100 pounds of body fat back in my 30s. In my 30s. I'm, I'm 43 right now. I'm going to have some loose skin. Right, it's going to happen. How much you can do about it, guys? Someone tried to say that's genetics. It's not genetics. <laughs> that's been one of the, the jokes that other YouTubers have made, but that's, that has nothing to do with genetics. All right. My bad arm insertions is genetics. The blue skin is not genetics. My awesome calves and quads are genetics. I train that stuff. <laughs> I don't even do that much quad work. I mean, unless we count my squats. I don't do as much quad work as some people do. They're smaller quads than me. It's kind of like when people bring up arm stuff. It's like, well, I probably do more arm work than some guys who have bigger arms than me. It's called genetics, guys. Deal with it. And you know what? It's sort of stuff that people worry about. And I would say, why do you worry about things you can't change? Let's come over to that. Guys worrying about their genetics. You talk about the most useless thing you could possibly worry about. That's literally like worrying about that the sky is blue instead of purple and crying about it. Like, you can't change it. You have no ability to change it. And if you let it affect you in any way, you're not going to be productive. 
Now, it's one thing to realistically assess your genetics so you can work with them or work around them to some extent. Okay, I get that. But to actually fret about it, you're never going to get shit done. You're never going to accomplish anything. Okay, you're never going to accomplish anything worrying about it. And, you know, people will bring up the whole, well, you're doing matter for aesthetics. Well, what sort of loser cares about is aesthetics? I mean, if you're not going to sell your body to other men, because women don't care. They don't care as much as you think. If you're not planning on making a career selling your body to other men or doing bodybuilding shows, which often leads to the same thing, like, like why do you care? It has no impact on your life whatsoever. Okay, it might impact you if you're going to do YouTube and be shirtless and stuff. Okay, fair enough. But how many of you are planning on doing YouTube for a career? Are you even planning on doing YouTube fitness for a career? And I don't have good aesthetic genetics, and I've been pretty successful at it. Now, maybe not as successful on the YouTube end. My coaching end's been pretty good. Maybe not as successful as a lot of the guys who do have those genetics, even if they don't have as good a knowledge. But I've still been successful with it. So my question to you is, why would you even care? Why would you worry about it? So you can have something to cry about. I mean, just pick something random to cry about. If you want something just to cry about and whine about and be a little bitch about, just pick something random. I don't know. that Maybe you don't like the shape of your toe or you don't like your eye color or that there's mean people in the world. Just find anything to cry about if you want to be a little bitch. But don't cry about your genetics. You can't change it. Well, let's come back over to this. Reverse hypers. Reverse hypers. Felt them today, which I always do because I'm pushing them hard. All right, we're up to 360. And what I want to point out, I'll occasionally get people who are like, you're doing these wrong. Like, really? Louis Simmons, the man who holds the patent on it, who invented it, who rehabbed his own broken back and went to deadlift over 700 pounds with a broken back after rehabbing it with this device, has coached 80 world record holders, teaches them this way. Who, who the hell are you to correct him? I'm going to do them the way that he instructs them. And if you don't like it, that's too damn bad. Again, go back to those things you want to bitch and cry about. That would be one of them. I'm going to keep doing them this way. They're working. But five sets of 25 with 360 today on these. The goal is to get to 425 for that. So we're making progress. So I hope it has been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.